It was on June 6th of 1936 at St. Patrick Cathedral, Harrisburg, PA, that then Bishop George Leach, the fifth Bishop of Harrisburg, ordained then 23-year-old Father Vincent Topper to the priesthood. Eighty years later, the now 103-year-old priest, Monsignor Vincent Topper, is considered to be the oldest priest in the country by both age and ordination. The 80th anniversary of his ordination to priesthood was celebrated by the Diocese of Harrisburg at a special Mass held at St. Catherine Labore Parish, Harrisburg, where Monsignor Topper is present to and prays with the parish community. Bishop Ronald Gaynor, the 11th Bishop of Harrisburg, offered these very special remarks. Monsignor Topper, you have gathered us here for this celebration of the Mass of Thanksgiving in what for most of us, if not for every one of us, will be a -a once-in-a-lifetime celebration. (laughs) An 80th anniversary of priesthood ordination. Monsignor, congratulations. I don't know how many of you tried to find a greeting card that said congratulations on your 80th priesthood ordination anniversary, but as my grandfather used to say, they're as rare as hen's teeth. So, (laughs) but Monsignor, sincere congratulations and an outpouring of our love and our admiration for you and your priestly life and ministry. We did some research some months ago, and as best as we can tell, Monsignor Topper is the oldest living diocesan priest in the United States and the longest ordained diocesan priest here in the U.S. So once again. This is an amazing milestone for you and for all of us to share in thanking God and in thanking you. 1936, a young 23-year-old Vincent Topper prostrated himself on the floor of St. Patrick's Cathedral, rose and through the imposition of hands by apostolic succession of the fifth bishop of Harrisburg, George Leach, and through the consecratory prayer, a 23-year-old Vincent Topper became a priest of Jesus Christ. Anniversaries are not just about the passing of years, and in this case, many years, 80. But anniversaries are about fidelity over the course of the years. Promises made and promises kept. Sacramental grace received and sacramental grace abandoned to. So that you truly were conformed on that day to Christ the priest and through your fidelity and selfless commitment continued in that conformity of life to the Son of God who came in our flesh to be our great high priest. This anniversary is about fidelity and cooperation with God's grace in a selfless, dedicated manner. I mentioned a 23-year-old Vincent Topper, fresh out of St. Vincent Seminary, and I, I want to greet and, and thank Father Masick, the rec- current rector now, for being a member of the Benedictine community there, for being here to participate in this celebration as your alma mater, the place of your formation. And age 23 in the 1917 code was an invalid ordination. I'm not saying that the state invalid. What I'm saying is that Vince, uh, the young Vincent Topper had to get a dispensation from the Holy See in order to be ordained at that age. He would turn 24th in July following his, his ordination. And so for the kingly price of $25, the Holy See dispensed this young man so that he could be ordained early. I have no idea what that dispensation costs in 2016 dollars, even if it's available, 
but I can tell you it's not $25. 1936, Franklin Delano Roosevelt won his second term to be president, and it was by the greatest landslide in presidential elections. We're hearing so much about electoral votes these days. His um, opponent, Alf Langdon, got eight electoral votes in the general election. The Pope was Pius XI in those days. Pius XI was working hard on a milestone encyclical. It wouldn't be released until March of the next year, but he was working hard on it mit Sergen Brenner to, uh, I'm sorry, mit, mit, mit Brenner Sorge to um, expose the evils in Nazi Germany and to predict so accurately about religious wars of extermination, words from that encyclical, religious wars of extermination. It's purposely released in German. Pius XI would continue to be Pope for only three more years. The go-to book in the church in those days certainly was the Baltimore Catechism for catechesis and instruction in the faith, for preaching too, I'm sure. The very first code of canon law in the Catholic Church was issued in 1917, and it was still the new code. It was only 19 years old when Monsignor Topper was ordained. In that code, there were 19 canons that referred to pastors. The new code has 145. <laughs> you can see that they realized pastors needed more legislation until the 1980 code was promulgated. Things like financial councils, pastoral councils, business managers, pastoral associates, permanent deacons, were as foreign as space travel and organ transplants. In fact, finance councils and pastoral councils and business managers were synonyms for pastor. They summed up all of the rights and the duties of a pastor in those days. But Monsignor, you've seen so much in the world, in our culture, in our church, change. And you've weathered those changes with amazing fidelity and flexibility to continue to be what Christ called you to be and to what you said yes, to be a priest of Jesus Christ. The gospel is an interesting one. It's the gospel for this day, and I think by providence. Because Peter says to our Lord, what's in it for us? We've left everything. We're following you. What do we get out of it? Monsignor, you answer that question for all of us. It's one we all wonder humanly. We give up things for Christ. We give up things in order to be a disciple of Jesus. We give up in order to follow our special vocations, whatever they be, and certainly in religious life. And in the ordained life. We give up. And Peter was wondering, as he had and they had given up, this is on the heels, of course, of that young man who said that he's already kept all the commandments. What more does he have to do? And Jesus says, sell everything, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Peter wasn't just asking a selfish, self-centered question here. Peter doesn't, ch I mean, our Lord doesn't chastise him for it. In fact, he seems to be quite patient and even happy with Peter's question, because they have given up, and they are following Jesus. And Peter speaks on behalf of the apostles, what are the results? What are the effects of what we have done for you, Jesus? And our Lord answers him that you will receive. You will receive qualitatively that which is so superior to anything you have abandoned or relinquished you will receive so much that is qualitatively superior to anything you've given up. You will receive the very gifts of God, the joy, the peace, the love of Jesus Christ, far beyond the value of anything that has been abandoned or surrendered. Monsignor Topper, that is the witness of the life that you give to us. That is the cause of our joy on your anniversary. This is the reason for our sincere, profound 
gratitude to God for the gifts showered upon you supremely, qualitatively more valuable than anything you might have achieved, anything you might have succeeded or obtained in another path of life. But God chose you. You said your yes. And over these 80 years, you have lived a faithful, selfless life as a priest of Jesus Christ. Let me conclude with these words I came upon there, words spoken by St. John Paul II when he was addressing a convention or kind of a big retreat of priests in Rome during his pontificate. I think it fits very well with the message of this gospel, with the words of Peter about, I am holy, you too be holy. Listen to these words of St. John Paul addressed to priests, and today I think on this 80th anniversary of ordination, ones that we might ponder together. The priestly vocation is essentially a call to sanctity in the form that derives from the sacrament of holy orders. Sanctity is intimacy with God. It is the imitation of Christ, poor, chaste, and humble. It is unreserved love for souls and self-giving to their true good. It is love for the church, which is holy and wants us to be holy because such is the mission that Christ has entrusted to his church. Monsignor, congratulations. Thank you. God continue to bless you always and in all ways.